Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm reviewing Lego Creator Expert set number 10267 Gingerbread House. This set has 1,477 pieces. It's intended for ages 12 and up, and it retails for $100 in the US. It was released in September 2019 as that year's addition to the Winter Village sub theme. And it's pretty unique because it's one of the only Winter Village sets to be more fantastical rather than real world, along with Santa's Workshop and then 2020's Elf Clubhouse. All right, so here's the dad. Um, this is kind of the most boring minifigure in the set, although there are only two. But I still like the detailing on him. The icing and those buttons look really nice. That head mold is the same one as the Gingerbread Man from Series 11 of the collectible minifigures, which released in 2013. You can see he has back printing on the torso, but sadly nothing on the head. And so the head is supposed to be a sandwich cookie, kind of like an Oreo. So you can see he has a chocolate filling. I really love that mold. They've also used it for Clock King in the Lego Batman movie minifigure series. And I really appreciate it because, like I said, it's just a really cool piece. His accessory is actually his son, which is a one by 2 printed tile with, like, a sleeping gingerbread baby on it. It looks like he's sleeping in, like, a Pop-Tart kind of, like a toaster pastry. That's a really cute print, but I do think it kind of sucks that we just have two minifigures and then a printed tile as a baby. I, I really would have liked it if they had figured out a way to make that like a 3D object, whether it was built. I know that it's kind of too much to ask them to make a new piece for the baby body, but I really would have liked to see that as a 3D object and not just a print. And here's a closer look at the head. If you're not familiar with that piece, it is a new print with that mustache on it. You can see a hole over there. It is dual molded. That piece in the middle isn't printed. So yeah, it's a really interesting headpiece that hasn't been used very much. So I'm glad to see it come back. Here's the mother. She has the exact same torso as the dad, but I do like this minifigure a lot better. She has like rosy cheeks and a little bit of lipstick on there. So I really like that face print. She also has an awesome skirt piece. That's the same skirt that they used for like Minnie and Alice in the original Disney minifigure series. And it's just got icing printed all around it. And again, that just looks fantastic. Now, what I really love about her, though, is the filling. She has like a strawberry cream filling, it looks like, or it could just be colored icing. But I really like that because we've only ever seen the gingerbread minifigure with um, chocolate filling before. So having a pink filling in her head is really nice. The one thing I will say about both of these figures is that I wish that they had a little bit more detail you know, there's only two minifigures in a $100 set. Like, maybe they could have printed icing on the arms. I would have loved to see a little bit of leg printing, although the skirt on this minifigure really helps. Or maybe even something on the back of the head, because they just look a little bit plain, considering that there's only two of them. If there were more gingerbread characters, I don't think I'd feel this way. And her accessory is just one of those typical baby bottle pieces so that she can feed her baby. There are a ton of little side builds in this set, so we're going to start out by looking at the minifigure scale ones first. So over here we have the pram or carriage for the baby, and on the right we've got a snowblower. So starting out with the baby carriage, the wheels can't actually roll, which I'm kind of okay with because, I mean, I'm just going to be using this as a display piece, and I really love the way that they built that. It's just like the 2x2 two two circular jumpers with cookie prints on them. I think that that's adorable, so I'm perfectly fine with that. Then we have a gold ingot piece in brown, which Lego often uses as chocolate. That looks fantastic as well, and I really like the blue color of the carriage in general. You can have like the mom kind of push it from that bar in the front. Meanwhile, as for the snowblower, I also think that this is a really cool build. You do have actual wheels on this one, although you have peppermint swirls on the side and then that red and white color scheme that looks really nice. So you can roll it along the floor. Now, the gears in the middle that represent the like the blades of the snowblower won't actually turn as you roll. That's kind of a shame. I feel like maybe there was a way that they could have tried to get that to actually happen. But again, I'm going to be using this for display, so it's not that big of a deal. And it still looks really good and it'll roll, you know, if you use your fingers. Over here, did not push those pieces down all the way, um, but over here, this is where the snow blows out the side, obviously. They use this little like smoke or popcorn piece. I think that looks pretty good as snow, although it is a little bit weird just because I'm, I'm so used to seeing it as like popcorn and ice cream and stuff. And you can also rotate this so that you can have it like be blowing behind you or like over your shoulder or even turn it to the other side. So I really like that functionality there. The dad can easily hold on to those handlebars. 
while, like I said, the mom can be pushing the carriage, and the baby fits in there perfectly, just lying down, like, right under that little awning. Next up, we've got the Christmas tree. These are present in every Winter Village set, and I like the build of this one quite a bit. It's using that typical style of, like, angled plates wrapped around, like, a kind of a studs not on top core. I love it when LEGO builds Christmas trees like that, and this one looks really good. I like the darker green color as opposed to just a brighter green. And the way they built the star is really interesting. So it's actually on like a bit of an angle, so you can move it up and down. And these pieces, I don't know where they originated. They look like Nexo Knights pieces to me. And I didn't realize that they have a bar on the bottom. I thought that they were similar to like the angled like one by two plate pieces. I didn't think that they had bars in them. I thought that they would have anti-studs on the bottom. But I really like the way that they built that star. It's pretty unique to me, and you can kind of rotate that around. But other than that, the tree is fairly similar around all sides with just a little bit of difference in the ornaments. And there's a bunch of gifts to put under the tree. So we'll go from smallest to biggest. This is just a little truck. I like this build, although it really isn't anything special. I always like it when they use the roller skate pieces as wheels, though. Then we have this little train. This looks pretty good to me as well. I'm used to LEGO doing trains like this, and I always like it when they do. And then over here, we've got a rocking horse. This is probably my favorite gift because as you can see, it can actually rock, and it's really easy to put the baby on it. Um, if I just dump him out of there, you can just stand him up on that little stud, and there you go, he can be rocking on it. It is kind of weird that he's always asleep, but that looks really good. And again, I'm just really impressed that it's actually functional. Then as for the presents, there are four different presents. This one is kind of, I, honestly, all of these are kind of interesting builds. So this one's using like a clip as the bow. This has a little heart on top. This one is actually heart shaped. I really like that. I love it when they use that heart plate from the Lego movie too. This one's probably my least favorite because they're using like a pretzel piece as the bow and that just doesn't really work for me. I wish they had recolored that in red or something, because if it was in red, I think it would look like a great bow, but here it just looks like someone taped a pretzel to the outside of a gift. But that's it for all of the Christmas tree accompaniments. Getting to the house itself, I'm really glad that LEGO finally made a gingerbread house, because this thing is just freaking adorable. I love it. This has to be, like, one of my favorite, like, LEGO original builds ever. It's just, it's just so cute and like welcoming and it looks exactly like a gingerbread house should look. So I'm just going to take you guys on a quick 360 degree look around the side of the house and then we'll start zeroing in on some of the details starting with the outside and then working our way to the inside. So starting with the outside, we have this little snow covered table in the corner. While the build looks really nice, I don't love the way that they arranged the seats because there isn't a two by two space to actually sit the minifigures. You can put them on top like that, although that's kind of strange to me, why, why do you have that little dip then? But their feet can't actually fit into the dip. You can't even like pull up the table and then try to put it back down. They really just don't fit in there. So it's kind of a strange build to me, although I mean, I guess it still looks fine. Like I said, just an odd design decision. Then in the corner, you have a stack of firewood and an ax next to the outdoor fireplace. That's a great detail. And that outdoor fireplace, I don't know if that's actually a thing, like in houses in snowy areas. I mean, I live in a pretty snowy area. I live in Michigan, but kind of weird to me, although it is unique. So we'll take a closer look at that because there is a fireplace on the inside as well. This is the front door. There's a little stickered mat that says home sweet home. I think that that's really cute. You have lanterns outside. You have like these candy striped kind of columns and then you have a wreath over the door. Again, I really, I just, I really like the Christmassy feel of this set. I'm really glad I chose to build it this close to Christmas. And then on the side, we have a couple of candy canes sticking out that has the street name Candy Lane. And you can actually adjust these a little bit so you can have that actually facing upwards. I just kind of like it how it looks tilted out. Then moving around to the side, you can see more of the roofs and windows. I really love the way that the designer built the roof pieces because they use these smaller and larger macaroni tiles as the icing. And then you just kind of stud all of these one by one round tiles over to look like gumdrops. It's great detail. You've also got like this rocky piece used as icing dripping down the roof. And then going all the way down, the windows are actually built some sideways, some right side up. 
with these glitter one by one transparent dark pink and dark purple one by one bricks. That's a really great design choice. I I'm not really upset about the windows not being transparent because that looks exactly like candy to me. And then you've also got these little pink one by one kind of ice cream scoop pieces on the sides of the house in some places underneath the windows. These are the windows that are built right side up. You can see they are a little bit smaller and there are peppermint swirls between the places where the roofs meet. I really like the curve of this one, especially around the fireplace, but that window and roof design is pretty much present around the entire building. Here's the side door. It's built pretty similarly to the front door with the same columns, ice cream swirls, and the wreath. And now we can get inside the house, so let's start down on the ground floor by that side door. So in the corner by that side entrance, you can see that there are some shelves over here. I don't love that. I wish there had been something placed on the shelves or that this had just been regular wall because it was kind of fragile while building it, and I think it looks a little bit strange on the finished product. In the corner, you've got a dresser using those peppermint swirl pieces as doorknobs, or drawer knobs, not doorknobs. And then over here, you've got a cup and then a little cookie on a plate. The armchair in the middle of the room, I do think it's a little bit awkward because, you know, there's no floor over here, so it seems to be blocking the entrance a little bit. But that's using more of those chocolate bar ingot pieces, and it is on a jumper, so you can swivel it around or just pick it up and remove it if you'd like. The fireplace has a couple of small stockings hanging above it, as well as a really nice picture that is a sticker of the gingerbread family, and there are some candles flanking it. I love that that sticker. I think it looks really awesome, and I always like it when they have pictures like that. It reminds me of Mr. and Mrs. Claus in the Santa's Workshop set. And it's a little bit harder to see into the main entryway just because it is so deep, but you do have a little area, again, with those peppermint kind of columns, so it's like a little side table you, where you could place something. And there are a couple of those like toe ball bar pieces stuck into the wall where you could theoretically hang coats. That's a technique that Lego has used before and it's really nice to see. Meanwhile, in this corner, you have the kitchen. There is different tiling over here. This was a pain to put in, but it looks really nice. So there's a little stove in the corner along with an oven. That's just the mailbox piece that can easily be opened. There's a frying pan on the wall, a little oven hood up above. And then over here, you just have more drawers with cookie doorknobs this time, another mug, and a little sink. And I do like how the sink is raised up a little bit from the floor. Before we move upstairs, I do want to show you the play feature. So like every other Winter Village set, except Santa's Workshop, this does have a light brick in it. So if you push down on the chimney, which I'll show in just a second, the fireplace actually lights up. That's a really great play feature, and it's always great to see. I've turned off most of the lights over here just so you can see it glow a little bit better. Sorry for that poor quality. So that light brick feature is activated from the chimney, which I haven't discussed a lot, but I do like the way it's built up with all of these masonry bricks. There's a little puff of smoke coming out the top. It's made using that same ice cream scoop piece. So if you just push on it, it'll activate the light. Now you do have to push it down quite a bit. It kind of deforms the tiles around it. Not really deforms them, but it, just, it pushes them out of the way, and I don't like it because it really feels like you need to force it. Although there is a pretty easy fix for that, it's just on this axle, so if you add a stud underneath it, it won't move them out of the way like that. And the outdoor fireplace lights up in the exact same way that the one inside the house does. Moving on to the upstairs, over here we've got a little bedroom. I really love the way that the bed is built. I'm not sure exactly what this is supposed to be. It reminds me of Neapolitan ice cream, but you have the pink plate, then the white, and then you have more of those ingot pieces, but in a tan color this time. In the corner, you've got a dresser in those same colors using one of those beehive cotton candy pieces for a lamp. And then over here on another jumper, this is supposed to be the baby's crib. I love the way they built that. It's just a window frame tilted like upside down kind of so that you can put the baby in that little depression. And I do like the rug it's sitting on as well. In this corner, you've got the bathroom, so there's a little toilet over here sitting on a red rug. And then in the corner, um, it's kind of hard to see inside, but that is a bathtub that's filled with chocolate. So whoever's in it is going to be taking a bath in chocolate. I, I still think that's cute. I don't really know why they're bathing in chocolate, though. Um, I mean, I guess water would, like, disintegrate them, but I can't imagine that chocolate would be much better. And then over here, it looks like you've got a couple of towels hanging on the wall. 
if I can just get the camera to focus. Now, the only thing I don't like about this entire room is this little sloping roof section because that does like really come down in the middle of the room and it makes it impossible to properly separate the bathroom and the bedroom. So I think I would have preferred if they had just made a taller roof and had like a door separating the two rooms. So here are the figures positioned in the upstairs area and this basically just illustrates my entire problem with the upstairs which is that there's not really enough room for the figures. The bedroom area is fine with that high roof, but you can see the dad like barely fits in the bathtub. It's really hard to get him to lean back. Like my fingers can barely fit in there and it looks like he's always about to hit his head on the roof. Meanwhile, the kid doesn't even fit in the crib. You can't lie him down flat the way that you can in the, um, the scooter or the carriage, whatever you want to call it. So he's always going to be at an angle. I don't appreciate that. And then there's just not really enough room for the figures to walk around, especially not when the mom has this skirt. So I just, I don't love the upstairs area, even though it's really nice to look at. And I love the different furniture items. Here are the extra pieces for this set. As you can see, you get a lot of those extra printed one by one tiles, which is great. Here's the box for this set. I really love that scene that they have laid out on the front, although it is kind of weird that they have all of the gifts and the Christmas tree just out in the snow. The top shows you the set's inventory as with all creator expert sets. And then around the back, you've got a ton of stuff showing how to, well, not how to build it, but what you can do with the inside. And I have to say like all of these pictures make the set look a lot more roomy than it actually is in person. Here are the instruction manuals for this set. It's kind of interesting because you've got one oriented like the long way and then one in a tall way. It's kind of weird to see them try to squeeze the box image onto the front of this manual, but the only ad on the back is for the Corner Garage modular building, which released the same year. So I really loved this set when it was revealed. This is probably my favorite Winter Village set, or again, at least it was when it was revealed, just for the look, because I really love having a full-size Lego gingerbread house after like the only one we've gotten before this has been like a micro scale one in 2015. However, I feel like it could have been executed a little bit better. I know this set has like 1,500 pieces, but it doesn't feel like that at all. The finished size of the model is smaller than I was expecting. I know it's weird to constantly be surprised by like the size of Lego sets, but I really thought it would be bigger. And again, the rooms are just so cramped. And I just, I, I don't know where the 1,500 pieces went, to be honest. Like I'm sure a ton of them are little like one by one pieces. But I just, I built this and I feel like I can't believe that there's 1,500 pieces in it. It definitely feels like there's at least 1,000, but I don't know. It's just, it's an odd feeling that I have after building this set. And obviously I'm an adult. I don't really play with my Lego sets, but it's still fun to pose the minifigures inside and take pictures and just like set up little scenes. And I think it's a lot more difficult than it should be to do it with this set. Because like I said, the upstairs area is just so cramped. And I really don't understand why they couldn't have just made, like, that side of the house a little bit taller. Like, why do you need that weird little middle section in between the roof pieces? I don't know why they couldn't have just made, like, wider sloping roofs that just, like, met in the middle. So it just went in, like, a W shape. So I don't love the upstairs, even though I really like all of those little individual furniture builds. And as for the inside, it's kind of a shame that you can't fit all of this stuff in there. You can't fit the tree, which, okay... Maybe let's excuse that because getting a big tree is nicer than getting a tiny tree that can fit inside the house. But even just putting all of these presents on the ground floor would make it very cluttered. Then the fact that the baby's a one by two tile that can't even fit in its own crib. And it's just kind of disappointing. I don't think this set is a bad deal for $100, but I, I genuinely think it could have been executed a bit better. And for a $100 set, only having two minifigures and then a one by 2 tile that they try to pass off as a figure is disappointing. I really wish they had kind of been smarter with like their usage of pieces, made the house a little bit bigger, included at least three minifigures. Like, why can't we have a nice family of four, like make a gingerbread child or like a gingerbread teenager? So overall, I still love the set. I just don't really love... Every I just don't really love anything except the exterior, honestly. I love it as a display piece. I just am disappointed by the figures, disappointed by all of the random stuff that can't really fit in the house, and disappointed by the cramped upstairs. So I know that doesn't sound like a glowing review, but I still think it looks gorgeous on display with the other Christmas items in my home. So if you like the exterior, I think it's a worthy build. Just 
try not to get your hopes up about what's inside. So that's it for today. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys with more videos soon. Bye for now.